Hello, there you are. Thank you to our sponsors, ShipStation. When you use ShipStation, you can lower your shipping costs, uh, make returns easy, and keep your customers happy. And that's the most important thing. Uh, when you use ShipStation, and with all the time you save from automating your shipping tasks, uh, you can keep your business growing all year long. Keep growing your business all year long with ShipStation. Use promo code Jim today at ShipStation.com and sign up for your free 60-day trial. 60 days. Free. You can't put a price on that. No price, you see. That's ShipStation.com promo code Jim for your free 60-day trial. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible and suited to your schedule. Uh, visit betterhelp.com slash IDK. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P slash IDK to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash IDK. Flowers, dirt, which one gives life to which? You might find out on I Don't Know About That with me, Jim Jeffries, and I Don't Know About That. Hello, everyone. Hello, welcome. I think, welcome I think it was a little fast. I don't, fast. I don't give a shit. The music wasn't playing. We don't have any headphones. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can in this makeshift environment. Yeah, um, yeah hello, everyone. How are you all going? Hello. Hi. We, we have a special guest with us, Misty. We, Misty is going to be our, our, our um, expert mm -hmm. in something, um, but I still don't know what. Well, that, that, we're not to the part of the show yet. Yeah, I know. You can say hi, Misty. Oh, hi, Misty. <laughs> hi, Jim. <laughs> thanks, thanks for being on the show with, all your, with all your expertise. I'll try, to, I'll try to pick what you do from the room around you like I normally do. <laughs> Podcasting. Uh, if, you're trying to, uh, if you're trying to see me at the moment, I'm in the UK. I've just finished a gig in Nottingham, I've been told. Went great. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm about to go down and do a couple of shows in London there. All the, the whole tour has been sold out except for there's an extra show in Manchester and an extra show in London. You've already so. done that Manchester show. Oh, the Manchester one did sell out there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one sold Congrats out. Congrats on that. The three shows in that Manchester. That was a really good show. And I, got, I went to Manchester, did three shows and didn't get punched in the head, which is a record for me. Wow. Uh, yeah. I was punched in the head once in the Manchester comedy wow. store. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, old school. But, and it was wow. good. It was before everyone had camera phones. It was just a guy who lamped me and we got it on security footage. <laughs> if, uh, if, we had a, if we had the real footage it, it might have seemed warranted anyway <laughs> <laughs> the footage i have is, is the wonderful. security tape of any audio oh yeah yeah you yeah, can hear the whole yeah, yeah. thing yeah, yeah, yeah when he runs up on stage i go like this oh hang on mate and i was about to, <laughs> I was about, I was about to like rationalize with you oh you're not allowed up here the bathrooms are like <laughs> Yeah, you know, it all happened very quickly. And I've been asked a million times about it, but the guy never heckled. He never said anything. He just came up and hit me. And, it, and it, allegedly wow. it was about a joke that I did maybe eight minutes earlier. So he... Did, it slow it took him a while. He yeah, he, just, he really yeah. got heated up. I think right. he thought, I'll finish my drink. I've already paid for this. Yeah, he's going to get kicked out yeah. afterwards. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Well. I'll finish my drink. I've paid for this. And then I'll go up and lamp. And he was on a date, the young lad. Oh, oh. Yeah, I was on a date. He we just see if we, could, we should if we can find that guy now. Well, his brother right. his brother once um, wrote to me. And yeah. he was just like, hey, man, why, do you, like, why did you put that footage up? And I'm like, I could have got him... Yeah, no charge. yeah. Okay. I yeah. got punched. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, right. the cops said, "Do you want to press charges?" And I looked at the footage and I went, "No, nah, I think I'll do all right out of this." <laughs> yeah. So I, I didn't press charges. But I, I, I'm at the stage now. If someone hit me on stage now after what happened with Chris Rock and I'm, and other comedians and stuff like that, and it wasn't as much what happened to Chris Rock as much as the people who went, "Well, you shouldn't have fucking said right, that thing." Yeah. Nah, fuck it. You hit me. I'm pressing charges. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> do, do you when that after that happened? I did. It was a little little bit after I met you the first time. There was that gig we did in uh, Captain Brian's, mm. and you brought the screen down, and you broke down the footage. Is that a person? Or a did you do yeah. that a lot? Is that something you both. Done? Okay. I did that. I, 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 I did that once for Edinburgh. I had a great big screen before me, and I did it like a play-by-play uh, yeah. play thing. Where yeah. I said, and then this bloke came in, and this bloke, because the audience came up and started fighting with him, and I went into the dressing room, and Michael McIntyre, the very famous British comedian, if you're in the UK, they're probably the biggest comic in the UK, um, he was the other act on and he was on before me and me and Michael we uh, 
We we like each other, me and Michael. We we butted heads a bit when we were young fellas, but we we like we have a fondness for each other. Well, I have a fondness for him anyway. Anyway, but Michael can be he could be a bit of a prick, you know, like we all can, <laughs> right? And I went, I, went, I got punched in the face, and I went down. And I, there's a big long you go. You go down some stairs from the stage and then walk along this long corridor in the basement and then there's the dressing rooms back there and the dressing room has a stream of the gig. So he's seen me get punched in the face, right? <laughs> but but I've come off stage and I'm still all blustered and I'm sort of pacing around. I'm all fired up and everything like that. And by the time I got down to the dressing room, he changed the channel and he was just watching like snooker. Because right? <laughs> in Britain, that's primetime telly, right? right? right. And he's just watching like snooker. And, and he doesn't even turn to look at me. He just keeps watching the telly as I walk in. And he goes, how did it go? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, I went, not good, Michael. I just got punched in the head. <laughs> and, and, and he goes, he goes, no one can follow me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but he, had, he was watching it. Oh, he knew. Uh, he, uh, he, <laughs> he knew completely. <laughs> he knew, like, like to have the presence of mind to go, and I'll still play a trick on him after he got punched in the head. That's, uh, that's A-list comedy. Yeah. Champagne. <clears throat> um, all right. And uh, what was I going to say? So uh, there, Europe tours after that. Still on sale. Yeah, Europe Tales um, still on sale. Some gigs have sold out. Some we've added some extra shows. One in Poland. We added another one somewhere else. And what's um, like, special? Uh, um, Helsinki, I think, added one. Yeah, Stock, Stockholm. No, War uh, Warsaw, Poland. No, Warsaw. There was another one. Uh, uh, Helsinki. Hel Helsinki, Helsinki yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very very popular in Helsinki. <laughs> <laughs> and Helsinki is in what country? I know. Oh, Helsinki. Helsinki's in Stockholm's in Sweden. It's it's Norway. No. Stop oh, Sweden? No, keep going. It's it's Norwegian. Denmark. It's the Norwegian country that's almost Russian. Really? It feels Russian. Yeah. Hell, Finland. Finland, there you oh, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it feels yeah, dangerous. Yeah, yeah. When you're in yeah, Norway, you feel like, yeah. And then you get to Finland, you're like, huh. We went to a bar one time in Helsinki. Remember last time? And I have been. I should remember. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it seemed like there could have been a fight at any moment in this bar. Like, and it was all kind of Russian-y, Norwegian-y kind of. Yeah. So anyway, I remember the, Justin Bieber was was in a deposition, and they released the footage of his deposition, and it was like there was obviously someone off camera, and they just had that still camera of him, and it was something about him throwing eggs at someone's house or some shit, right? And, and he was just like, "Yeah, okay, yeah, okay." And then they were like, uh, they were like, uh, um, and and there was a period between June uh, to July where you were touring Australia, like this, right? And he went like this: "Have I have I been to Australia like that, right?" <laughs> And then the Australians were so offended. Oh, yeah. We well, would yeah. remember being here. <laughs> Surely. But after you've traveled the world and stayed hotel room, hotel room, hotel room, you know, like, right. yeah, fucking, it, it, I, I feel for him. I know. He would have been like a fucking chimp that they keep in a cage that they set out in the circus. <laughs> yeah. And then when he was 16, because that was yeah. the age he toured you Australia. You the sights. You only see inside yeah, the tent. Exactly. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You were back in your cage until you have to sing the baby, baby song, and then you can come <laughs> back out. Um, and also, it's been about a month, but you're special. People should still watch no, it. Watch the special. If, if you've learned anything at the shows, people haven't watched. All, not all That's your fans what I have found out because because we pre-recorded the show and I just did like uh, a casino in, in in Canada and I did a casino in Philadelphia uh, this weekend. And I asked when I walked out, who's seen the special? And like most of them hadn't seen the special because they were coming to the show and they didn't want to ruin the material. Yep. Uh, you don't have to do that. It'll be all new material. You so know, people have been asking me, like, oh, is it the same material as the special? I go, no, it's completely different. Everyone's mind is blown that you're able to... Well, you, you, you start thinking of the jokes before the special comes out. It's not like the special comes out and you Stop go... Stop revealing secrets. Oh, this is the week I've got to write it. <laughs> we're trying to make you look awesome. <laughs> no, no, no. You, but you still... You still write and retire, write and retire, and it's just sort of, it's, it, it, it's, it look, I don't know, how did they build the pyramids? No one knows. Aliens. Slave labor, and we still show up, and though people boycotted the World Cup for the same reason. Hmm. Those well, stadiums were built by slaves. We should times. marvel at them yeah. the same way. Different times. Anyway, <laughs> follow us on Instagram at IDCAT Podcast, <laughs> and Patreon is patreon.com slash IDCAT. Who's our special guest today on Patreon, Jack? Haley Arantia. From the Goldbergs. Yeah. Yeah. And also from American Idol. And Mass Singer. Is she in the Mass Singer? Oh, yeah. Are you allowed to reveal that yet? She was already revealed. Oh. <laughs> um, what so. type of animal was she? I don't. Tune in to find Ooh. out. All right. <laughs> I'm guessing a bird. Um, and uh, yeah. And so follow all that stuff. Also, um, 
Oh, I have shows in April. I don't remember where. The Rockmorton Theater in Mill Valley and Cobbs in San Francisco. It's on my website, foreshaw.net. Go there. Master marketer. Yeah, I'm excellent at it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do some ads. Let's do some ads. <laughs> In a landscape where free and fast shipping is the norm, it can be hard for a smaller e-commerce business to compete. Keep yourself competitive with ShipStation.com. When you use ShipStation.com, you can lower shipping costs, make returns easy, and keep your customers happy. And with all the time you save from automating your shipping tasks, you can keep your business growing all year round. Running a business can be stressful and using ShipStation isn't. And right now they've got a free trial uh, and quick setup. So if you've been on the fence, now's the time to check out ShipStation. My wife is laughing in the corner. We are doing these in the middle of the night in London. ShipStation makes it easy to grow your business by handling your orders from every marketplace in my dashboard. <laughs> ShipStation effortlessly integrates everywhere you are online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. Manage every order with one simple dashboard Automated routine shipping tasks, uh, print shipping labels, easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment and automate every notification. And with enterprise solutions that make warehouse optimization easy, ShipStation scales when you do. This is the last bit, folks. Keep growing up your business all year long with ShipStation. Use promo code Jim today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com. Promo code Jim. Make ship happen. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Ah, uh, look, I'm a big uh, fan of therapy. I think it helps me out. I've, I've, from time to time in my life, I've had therapy and then I sort of think, oh, I'm okay now and I stopped taking it and then I need it again. So if you were sick, what would you do? You'd go to a doctor. If you had a broken bone, you'd get it mended. If your brain's not quite right, I suggest going to therapy. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react a certain way until we talk through things with a therapist. BetterHelp connects you with licensed therapists who can take you on a journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Uh, as I said, I've benefited from therapy. I know Forrest has benefited, Kelly has benefited. If you want to be <laughs> as mentally stable as the people in this podcast, I would suggest you go to therapy as well. If you're thinking of starting, give better help a try. Just fill out a quick questionnaire and get matched with one of the licensed therapists and switching therapists is, and, and you can switch therapists at any time, right? There's no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash IDK today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash IDK. Please welcome our guest, Misty Roberts. All right, now it's time to play Yes, No, Yes, No, Yes, No. Yes, no. This is normally yes, a song. No. Probably going to be a song. <laughs> yeah, editing, song. study book, watch cover. Usually Good. you say hi, Misty, first, though. Hi, Misty. Hi, Dan. <laughs> well, we she's already been at the other bit. Ah, uh, yeah, true. Good point. There's already been a report. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> yeah. Here um, I am. You lasted the first eight minutes. Clearly, we've never done this with an in-person guest before. We, <laughs> we have. Doing. We have. Uh, haven't we? Jay Leno? Jay Leno. Was he there for the intro? I don't remember. He probably was. Yeah. Feels probably. like something. <laughs> Feels like something. He was just doing burnouts out the front of the studio. <laughs> we've done a couple of guests, actually. We've done, we've done some at your house. <laughs> you, oh, you, yeah. We did Rob Dukes. Yeah, Jay Leno oh, was off yeah. denim shopping. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, uh, Misty Roberts. You were there when we did the J Lo episode. I was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was at the yeah. studio. You, you, you know Misty, but you don't. Maybe mm-hmm. I guess you don't, you don't know. know what she does. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It was, yes. Has it got to do with the entertainment business? It does. Yeah, you've, of, you've, yeah. you've, 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 al- you've yeah. almost already like you like you could have in the we intro could have done been the, talking yeah. about this almost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, about, you were not good. You getting were. punched on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been punched on stage. Oh, uh, this time. Not an expert. <laughs> um, uh, I, I suspect I'll get punched again. I don't think it's my fault. Yeah, I think I think you got one one more eventually. Yeah, eventually, but so it's about club. the entertainment business. It's not, we've done stand-up comedy, so we know you're stand-up. Yeah, comedy. it's not stand-up. Comedy. This is something you do, but but what Misty's going to be talking about, I and mean, we can it'll have some crossover. Yeah. You do this, but what she does is in a different genre. You do this. I do this constantly. Yeah. Complaining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I complain yeah. in a whole different yeah. genre. <laughs> you complain. Is it, is it about shitting yourself? <laughs> I can't say I have ever shit myself. You did it no. never. I mean, when I was a kid, clearly. Oh, but when you're a baby, yeah. Not yeah, since yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. You did it this yeah. past weekend. Yeah, you did it this weekend. Oh, you it shit is. yourself. <laughs> I did it this past weekend. Uh, smuggled drugs into Canada. Well, hey, no comment. No comment. Well, but it was during that. Mm. I have smuggled drugs into Canada. You're doing it right now as this podcast airs. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, traveling. Mm-hmm. Well, close. We're yeah. going to talk about music touring, music but it's going to have a crossover into just touring in general. Yeah. Right. So we like bus tours and stuff like that. It's touring, touring, like entertainment yeah. touring, but Misty Roberts works in the music touring business. Okay. Misty Roberts has been a music tour manager for 22 years, starting out on van tours and small clubs and working our way up to arenas and stadiums. She's worked with such artists as the Jonas Brothers, Metallica, Enrique, uh, Enrique Enrique Iglesias. Enrique. <laughs> Enrique Iglesias. Sorry, Enrique. I know you listen. Uh, Bruno Mars, James Taylor, and is currently working with Haim. She That's is. Awesome. Yeah, I love Haim. Yeah. yeah. She is also I don't a proponent. Know who Haim is. Yeah, you'd have to be hip. You might yeah. recognize oh, the music. I know, I know, I'm the worst. By the end of this podcast, you will. She mm. is also a proponent of discussing mental health with regards to the touring industry, and Misty is featured in the upcoming book called Touring and Mental Health, The Music Industry Manual, and she will also be featured on iHeartRadio's See Her, Hear Her, an International Women's Day event highlighting the women behind the scenes in the music industry. So. Oh, that's cool because I do suffer um, with mental health on the road, and that's so I have to, I have to, I have to keep checking myself. Mm-hmm. I have to check in with people, and I have to, you yeah. know what I mean. I've, I, oh, it's the because it, it's it's both the funnest part of the year is the tour, and also the sad. You're away from your family. That's yeah. how. That's why I get sad about. It. I'm away from your family. I don't have a family, and it's tough. Mental. I mean, but it's the same thing. Like you said, it is great. Like people never want to hear you. Be, no, I don't, don't want to. I don't want to complain about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've had a blessed life. I'm yeah, not yeah, complaining. Yeah. yeah, when you're like, oh, I gotta go to Europe and this, but it's like it is. It's, it's not still as glamorous difficult. as people assume. It's difficult to be. Not. Yeah. You're not and there's some cities that are way more fun than other cities. Right. It's like my wife seems to always want to support me when I'm in Vegas <laughs> and, and check that my comedy's doing okay in Vegas. <laughs> she doesn't she, want to come to Iowa. She never or? checked in on me in Cleveland. No, never come. She never does it. Then, then, oh, what's happening now? You're going to Nashville. Oh, she's going to help out again. Oh, <laughs> came out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we're going to ask you some questions about music touring, touring in general, and then you're going to answer them. And at the end of that, Missy, you're going to grade them on his accuracy, zero through 10, 10 is the best. Kelly's okay. going to grade them on confidence. I'm going to grade them on et cetera. We'll add those all together. If you score 21 through 30, you're in a car on your way home from the airport. Mm. <laughs> 11 through 20, in a car on your way to the airport. Mm. Zero through 10, on a layover at the Bucharest airport. <laughs> uh, remember that? Ooh. That was the one in Romania. Yeah, that yeah. is it. That was, there was just families sitting on the ground <laughs> with, with butcher paper out. <laughs> with butcher paper on the floor, carving ham. Whole hands. <laughs> A lot of guys. Yeah. They'd, they'd bought a loaf of bread. They had a ham. They just laid on the looking up at you like that. Oh, it was. And something. you're the weirdo for looking. Oh, right. it was. Exactly. It was something else. You could like. It definitely felt like there was bribes to be given. Yeah, yeah. To, to move through the airport quicker. Well, the TSA, TSA, whatever the version of TSA is there. It was one guy and. I remember I had all the podcast equipment. He took everything out and took it apart, and the whole line's just waiting for it. Because I remember that that. Uh, whatever security line was a long time and he was like looking at the microphone and stuff and they all had like big guns Jeez. and then we got on that plane and no one had ever flown before apparently remember they were just 
<laughs> they were standing up as we were ascending. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, up. As, soon, <laughs> as soon as the landing gear came out, they all stood up and we were like, no, nah, that's not how it works. <laughs> and we, we were looking around going, what's wrong with these fucking people? And they definitely don't know the whole you leave aisle by aisle. Oh, no, we can't be Euro They don't rush. know that. They yeah. all go for it. Oh, you call it the Europe rush. The Euro rush. Right oh, from oh. the back of the plane. They run to the front of the plane to get yeah. out first. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, what are you doing? They were going for it. No, I, it's the we only time. flying to Israel, I remember. It's the only the time rest. when I'm in a public place where it's not a customer service person or it's like just like a, a stranger where I will voice up. Because oh, if yeah. someone fucking tries to beat that system. Yeah. Oh, I'll fucking go for it. I, I didn't realize that was like an actual thing because oh, that happened thing. on my flight in May. I was coming back from Chicago. It was one o'clock in the morning and this European couple from the back of the plane tried to come up to the front and it started a fight. Like yeah. they were throwing punches and Not I was like, right. what oh, the no, fuck no, is no, going no. on? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I, I got finally got it. my first airline flight. I, I, <laughs> I, I, there, there was these two girls that were quite pretty and they sort of, they rushed for it. Like, like, oh, the whole world stands still for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're doing, everyone. So, Society has fallen. <laughs> These two are more important yeah. than the rest of us. Yeah, we were in Raleigh one time. You were, I was. I remember you saw it happen. This I almost got in a fight with a guy. Yeah. He came on, I'm like, yo. He's like, you got a problem? I'm like, yeah, I got a yeah. problem. And then we were fighting, like, all the way to the baggage claim. We're like, I need to like, look, look, look. I'm like, oh, my God. We okay. saw, we saw a, a famous actor uh, have an issue on the on a flight the other day. Oh, yeah? I don't know if we want to name him because no, he's a nah. nice guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. You don't want to. And I don't From think Philly he was Detroit. at fault. But he, uh, yeah, There's but he, definitely something about being on an airplane that brings it out of you. Yeah. I don't know I, what it I is. I think he was in the right. I think he was touching the screen to pick a movie. Yeah. And then the person I was like, buddy, buddy. And then was <laughs> oh, a bit aggressive yeah, about right. the whole thing. And he right. was like, screw it. But then like, because he was a famous guy, he went into his bag and pulled out a face mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I now didn't. you can't see me. Yeah. I didn't realize that's who it was. And you said, hey, isn't that so time ago? <laughs> oh, I think so. But I didn't want to turn around. Oh, no, no, it was, it was, I went to the bathroom and came back and I was like, oh, but then you put a mask on. Right. Again, I was I asleep. Gonna... I recognized the voice. I knew his voice. Uh, yeah. Mystery. And, yeah. yeah. Oh, but no, uh, but no he's, a, he's a renowned good guy. And yeah. I don't think he was at fault. But like I could tell he was like, fuck, if anyone filmed that. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> We're on his side. Um, all right. Why are music tours important for artists? Well, these days, because our music is basically given away for free these days. People used to used to uh, do these tours to promote the album. Now they have the album to promote the tour. Um, so it's how they make their money. That's why it's important for artists. That's the, it's the majority of their money is live work now. All right. Who invented music tours? Who invented, invented or like who started? Music? It always every answer for anything that's got to do with entertainment is. Vaudeville. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no oh, one knows yeah, really yeah. quite what Vaudeville was. And we all say in every podcast, oh, it's an old Vaudeville trick. It's an old yeah. Vaudeville thing. There would have been a, there would have been a two. Vaudeville, you say it weird. Is that how Australians say it? Yeah. How do I you say like, it? Vaudeville. 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 I yeah. say Vaudeville. There is, there is an extra E in there. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's an Australian yeah. act of it, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, so, I, so, so Vaudeville. Yeah, that's probably better. No, Vaudeville. Anyway. Oh, uh, go, anyway, yeah. we should do a podcast on that yeah i think we might <laughs> anyway so vaudeville uh, I, I reckon there would have been oh no we'd even go back further than that i reckon mozart would have toured around and then like brought him into you know so so you would have like the opera and then you would have and you still have this today like famous conductors and stuff come in or famous orchestras come in so i think it would go way back to to then uh, whatever that was 1700 what about stadium tours when do you think that who do you think that was Doing that first. Stadium tours. Um, well, or, the Beatles. The, the Beatles were the first band to really play a stadium, and that was Shea Stadium was the first time that anyone had like a real big uh, artist come and play to a stadium, and they didn't have the speakers set up. All they had was the tannoy, which is um, the brand. People, it's a British term. They say here through the tannoy, which is the brand of the speakers, right? They're oh. just the the next batter up to bat. They, all they had was those little. Oh, those like oh, echoey. No. Yeah, those echoey things. That's oh, what shit. that's what the Beatles were playing through. <laughs> and if you watch that footage, that no one thought. We could put chairs on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 that's how new it was. No one had cracked that code. The Beatles were on a fucking 20 foot by 20 foot black stage. They did like a whole lot of milk crates with a curtain put over the side of it. And they couldn't hear themselves and they were just playing and everyone was just screaming and the cops were all just standing around there. So I would say Shea Stadium, the Beatles, Beatles. 1964. Wow. What is the estimated global value of the live music industry? Live music industry. Oh, um, uh, uh, I'd say 500 billion. A gazillion? 
No, 500 billion. <laughs> 500 billion. A recent Nielsen study found that blank percentage of Americans attend live shows at least once per year. So how many Americans percentage-wise attend one show a year? 30%. Uh, how are tours set up? I know there's a lot that goes into it. But Actually, I'm going to put that up to 55%. 55, okay. How are tours set up? How would you say? Like, I know it's a broad question, but just like in Okay, couple, well, first of all, you, you, you call the artist, and the, or the artist calls their agents and go, oh, I want to go on tour. And then the agents... Uh, they call a touring company like uh, Outback or AG or Live Nation or something like that. They have connections to all the theatres and arenas and stuff like that. And some of them they even have partial to full ownership of. And what they do there is they book you into these certain rooms. They give you a guarantee on your predicted amount of tickets that you're going to sell. If you go over that, you could go into bonuses, similar to that of an athlete. If you score this many home runs or whatever, you'll get bonuses. Um, and then uh, you get uh, to a manager and that's the person that actually comes on the road with you and makes sure that you're in your hotel and that you're there on time and they make sure everything's set up on the stage. Now, comedy and music would be different in the, in the fact that uh, musicians will have things like uh, roadies and guitar techs and, and lighting guys. And that type you of had stuff. some of that in Australia. No one I, in one tour in Australia, I had big screens and trucks and all yeah, that type that was of stuff. Fun. Like I had a, I had yeah. a full thing. And it, it wasn't cheap to do that, but I wanted to do like a proper like where it was cool. experience yeah. type of thing. Um, <laughs> but for me, I just go, have a chair, just slightly left to the microphone, <laughs> put a stool next to the chair. <laughs> then if we, then we, if we show up early, we go like this, play the music, Forrest will say something on the microphone, then I'll come out. When I take the microphone out of the stand, do a quick soft fade away, right? Now, fucking... Without the tour manager, when we have to do a casino, although this weekend they both, they they both nailed it. They, it, they yeah. both nailed it this weekend. But I would say it's a 50-50 shot of a yeah, yeah. If, right. we don't, if we don't have the tour manager, it's like... Yeah, it's yeah, a 50-50 we'll 50 we'll shot. Yeah. It's, it's a, a simple yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, and I, I always think... Fucking bands, all these lighting people, they obviously bring their own people. Um, um, so yeah. so uh, with, good. with the tour, then there would be things like you have to book buses, you book things. Uh, I travel around Europe and uh, Australia with security. Um, you have your opening acts and all that type of stuff. And you then, got it. We'll move on. Okay. You got it. What, you like this one. What's the difference between a booking agent and a promoter? Okay, so a booking agent oh, actually like books them. the actual gigs and the promoter actually promotes the gigs okay. you know that's i know i don't know if there's a better way to say that yeah. the, 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 they they put out the adverts and stuff like that but sometimes with the promoters you're like how are you promoting this and there's lots of promotion that goes on where you don't even see it the big benefit of going with a large company is that they have a mailing list for everybody who's ever bought a ticket from them for anything and they can target market um, if, say, someone saw a comic that they like, let's say they saw Bill Burr, they go, you might like Jim Jeffries or whatever, you know what I mean? They'll, they'll forward on like that. What are the main duties of a tour manager? Um, well, make sure all the flights and everything, that's the big one. All the travel is done. All the hotel rooms are booked. Uh, you Make sure you're all fed. Uh, and then to make sure you actually show up on time. And there's, there's a little bit of babysitting when, not so much with me now, but when I was taking a lot more drugs yeah there was <laughs> a little bit yeah there was a lot more <laughs> yeah, yeah. we were like we had this we had this guy we have this guy because uh, if you went out afterwards yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. We, have, we have this we have this guy in australia mike right no was it what, i'm what's his name what are you talking about the, the killers oh michael Oberg. mike michael Oberg. yeah, yeah. Mike, michael Oberg. yeah he's, he was with the killers so, so michael Didn't, michael Oberg, great guy now he now, pink. now he, he he road manages black pink right yeah. but he only managed two acts me and the killers, right? <laughs> and that's all he did. He tour managed me and the killers. If I was touring, then the killers were touring. And he just, yeah, and he's a great guy. And I, one time I was wasted about four in the morning or something like that. And I go, oh, I must be easier doing my tours than the killers because, you know, there's no bands and lines like that. And he just looked at me and went, the killers go to bed, Jim. <laughs> yeah, it's like two in the morning. Really? He's up yeah. drinking. Yeah, he's an older bloke. He doesn't want to fuck it, but he has to make sure I don't get my head kicked in. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> um, there you go. Uh, da, da, da. How far in advance is the tour booked? 
Oh, months. Um, re- you really, you really want. This six- is music, remember too. I you, know you're going. You, basically you really years, want but- six months at least to, months. To, to book it in advance, and the, even more than that, really a year would be the optimum amount of time because you have to find uh, venue availabilities. Right, getting the crew together is takes a lot shorter amount of time, and uh, and all that type of stuff. But actually finding the venues and the routing is in, important. And I've had some dodgy ass fucking routing in my career <laughs> where you're like, we were just. Just near this city. That's one of the next questions. Yeah. We're just near yeah, this yeah. city, but it's like they were booked up on the Saturday, so you had to go off to butt fuck there and then fly back <laughs> over here for well, this. There you go. How our locations decided? I'll skip ahead. Though. Well, they try. They try to uh, to map it out. Like, but sometimes even if you see, so like one time, I got booked to play St. John in Canada. Yeah, small place in Nova Scotia, I believe, and St. John's. Which it's all on the yeah. east coast of Canada, but they have two little to- where you get on like an Indiana Jones style fucking yeah. plane. JJ right? still talks about this route. Yeah, and, he, he's from that area. And, JJ Whitehead, and, and it like, took yeah. us twelve hours to get. Like <laughs> that is not a trip that anyone wants to take. There is no direct. It took three flights to skip around to find people who would eventually get us. You had to go like this, 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 this to get to there. So if you if you have, if you live in St. John's or St. John. <laughs> Don't visit the other. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was a pain in the ass to get from, I think, Gainesville, Florida to Gainesville, Texas. Of course. Why yeah. oh, would anyone yeah. do that route? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, I, yeah, I think you had to get like, uh, didn't you have to, how did you get there? I don't remember. I think like two oh, flights of driving four this. hours or something. Because I was flying, you were doing a private gig, you were doing a college gig in Gainesville, Florida. And then I flew into Dallas and I drove up to meet you. But I remember passing by Gainesville, Texas. I'm like, I don't even know how if they have an airport here. But so, yeah. Oh, there's been yeah. a few times where Jack will ring me up and we'll be organizing trip um, travel because I don't need a, anyone to organize my travel on just the weekend gigs, mm-hmm. you know. And Jack will be like this, oh, I've got some interesting news for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what's what's going on, Jack? He goes, okay, if you fly, you're going to have to get on a five, I wake up at 5 a.m. Yeah. after My show finishes about 11.30 after mm-hmm. the meet and greets, you know, it's not a lot of time to sleep, you know. And then he goes, and then he goes, but there's a ferry. Oh yeah, <laughs> and if you get on this ferry, it'll you'll save yourself an hour. <laughs> But it'll be like this. And then he's like, nah, the river's frozen over. <laughs> yeah, the ferry doesn't the run this fer- time of year. The <laughs> ferry only runs in the summer. I bought the ferry idea. That was you getting yeah. from, uh, freaking, uh, What's the uh, Grand Vancouver, Rapids or, to uh, Green Bay, I think. Yeah, Grand uh, Rapids to Green Bay. And it's just yeah, got the body of water absolutely. between it. Yeah. Yeah. And you think, I'll just go like that. Otherwise, you've got to drive around the thing like that. The drive took totally. forever. I the flight went like this. connected in Milwaukee or something. There's no easy yeah. way to <laughs> no. get from Grand Rapids <laughs> to Green Bay. Well, in the summer. In no the problem. summer, you get on the ferry. <laughs> no it's problem. a ferry. Yeah. It's fun. Um, what is a package tour? Package tour is when you were tour several acts at once so that they can sell more tickets as a combined unit. So you'd go the gods of heavy metal or the or the something closer to our field, yeah, the, the, red, the Redneck tour. There was one in the elevator at the casino we were in Canada and it said the 90s tour and it was Vanilla oh. Ice was a headliner, <laughs> Rob Bass, <laughs> All For One, um, Sugar Hill Gang and Young MC. I, I, see, I, yeah. I, I got, so I got offered that. a movie the other day, just a straight up offer to be in a movie. And it was another zombie film, and we all know how my zombie <laughs> films, how my zombie films you have really gone. Those. <laughs> and I, I've got to think I'm not even their first choice, right? They've rung a few people, and it was, the movie, the other lead was going to be uh, Vanilla Ice. It was going to oh be me and Vanilla God. Ice and zombies. That movie's oh coming out. God. With, it's coming out with someone else you besides have me. Done that though, yeah. just to be yeah. in a movie with Vanilla. <laughs> Were you it's playing like, yourself or are you playing a character? I, I think can't it remember. Was, I think I believe Vanilla Ice is playing Vanilla Ice, and then <laughs> yeah. then he meets me somewhere in the apocalypse, <laughs> and then, Jim, then Jim, I was thinking about myself in the third person. Then Jim Jeffries in Vanilla Ice. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can, you, can you go back and accept this? Seriously. I'm pretty sure no one's picked up on the part. This is like yeah. two weeks You're ago. You're a zombie comedian. This could be get the next part. cocaine bear. <laughs> the next, there'll only be one cocaine bear. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, crushing. All right, it was crushing. Oh, whatever. Um, what happens if an artist gets sick? Doesn't want or doesn't want to continue. Well, you can have. Well, if he doesn't want to continue, that's a different matter. But if someone gets sick, you have insurance on the tour to uh, refund people tickets and stuff like that if there's a proper illness. But for the most part, the show must go on. There's only been a couple of now. I can say this now because it's been a bit of time. But I, I had to cancel 
um, some gigs in Bali and Jakarta on the last tour, and I went straight to Australia. A lot of people thought that I was just fucking just dicking off the tour, but the truth of the matter was I had COVID. Yeah. So, so the first I, time in Asia. First time, yeah. And first I, time I, getting COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd never gotten COVID. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'd never gotten COVID. I tell that John Cleese story about getting COVID. That was a false positive. And um, so I had COVID and I was stuck in it. And it was like, it was going to be a line ball whether I got home for Christmas. I was seeing all my, all my family was having Christmas at the same time. And I had one day when my chest was just hacking and all that type of stuff. And I was like really sick in this room. And uh, so I go down to the pharmacy to get those, those tablets you take, right? And the guy was like this, oh, yeah, just bring your passport down. And then I Googled a bit and it turns out if I brought my passport down, I was stuck in fucking uh, oh, in Singapore yeah. for two yeah. weeks. Oh, geez. So I was just like this. Oh, I'll risk it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I must have been that sick because I was like, I assume I won't die. No, nah, <laughs> but I waited. I waited till I got a negative test before I left. You're pretty sick, though. JJ and I left you there. Yeah. It felt it felt sad. We were like, we're moving on to Bali without you. Yeah, and yeah. They, like, they, they just went to Bali and had a holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, <laughs> we did a show. Oh, yeah. We did a show at like a, a beach club, and some of the people came out that were going to go to your show, but it was sad because at the hotel. Your net, your face was everywhere, whatever, and, and people were like, "What happened?" And we're like, "Well, I, 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 I didn't want to, I didn't want to like say, I what didn't want to so. say anything in case I was going through the airport and I got in trouble, and I had to film a TV show and show. But I, I had a negative test before I left the yeah, country. Yeah, no, you recovered quick. And uh, um, yeah, I, I stayed in. I stayed there for seven days in this hotel room. Like eight days or nine days. Eight days. Eight or nine days days in this hotel room in Singapore. I didn't have anyone with me. And geez, I was miserable. (laughs) Oh, God. And you're in a great city, uh, country, like where you could like go out and get great food. I could. I could. And then like, I think they cottoned on to that I was like, no, don't come in here or anything like that. <laughs> and, the, and the room service is just beginning to be left in the hallway and stuff the like that. The room must have been disgusting when you were I had, oh. I, had I, I, would have, I asked for trash bags. I had so much trash from them. They were giving me all my room service food in takeaway boxes. <laughs> I filled like a whole bag. Like, ah. <laughs> yeah, your rooms ordinarily on a two-day stand aren't very clean. So yeah, I, yeah, imagine. No, I, yeah. Uh, I enjoy yeah. messing up a hotel. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, but, but I hope that answered your question. What's the longest tour in history? <laughs> music, uh, music. I I would say at the moment it's Elton John's Goodbye Yellow Brick Road tour, <laughs> and I, I it was COVID stopped, but I think it's just finishing now, and it's meant to finish in Dodger Stadium. But I, I think COVID s- counts in the middle, like you have to stop. Yeah, it now. yeah, but but he he was doing that. He was doing that a year and a half before COVID, and then I saw him in January in Australia perform. Okay. So that's yeah. a long ass tour, but I don't know. I, I remember the Guns N' Roses Use Your Illusion tour being a very big tour for a very long time, and that was in the 90s. It was about 92. And um, and that I remember that being a very big tour. Um, who is the most toured artist? Like, I guess who has toured the most? Yeah, but see, there'd be artists that you wouldn't even know about. That it, Like, I, I would say it's a poor artist because they have to keep touring nonstop forever and ever and every day. But if you're talking about big, great, big tours... Yeah, it would be somebody. You I would, would say it has to be Paul McCartney. I don't think anyone tours more than Paul. Paul McCartney's got a new tour every... Uh, if you want to see the guy, you can see the guy. I've seen him like seven times and it hasn't been like... I haven't followed him anywhere. <laughs> You know, and it, like since like you going, travel a lot though. Yeah, but going from the Beatles to Wings, yeah, to to every single solo tour. Every time he brings an album out, he has another tour. I I would say it's Paul McCartney. This band broke a Guinness World Record when they played three hundred and nine nights in just over two years. So they're performing pretty much. That's every like other the Grateful day. Dead. Every other Grateful Dead. Mm. Mm. I don't think they have the stamina. What? Oh, okay, <laughs> so I'm going to pull back on that one. Um, well, I know the Beatles. I know the Beatles performed. There's like more almost shows. every other night, if you think about it. Almost yeah, but the Beatles used to do eight hours a night in Hamburg and stuff, but that wasn't a tour as such. The Beatles, you know? okay. Um, but the Beatles, the Beatles used to perform every day. What effect does touring have on your mental health? This is a little uh-huh. question. <laughs> well, it's not good. Um, <laughs> it's a lot better if you don't drink, but the, 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 you feel very detached from society because you're in your own little bubble of what you're doing and all that type of stuff. Um, I, I, I know that a lot of... Re- I just watched that documentary on drumming and uh, um, from the guy from The Grateful Dead Son did a documentary on drumming. And I think that... Um, it's very hard on relationships and your relationship to your partner, especially if you're married, it's really the most important thing going on in your life and your family. And so if that crumbles, that can really hurt you. That's why you bring your friends too, like me and Jay. Oh, I, I, that's why like the support acts, you have to be a good comedian. 
right? That's rule number one. But second of all, and this is very important, you have to be an easy hang. Not even a good hang. Yeah. Just an easy hang. No. Because if you get some kind who's fucking difficult or that, who complains, he doesn't like this room, doesn't like that room, bloody hell, that's a pain in the neck. Well, I always say a part of it, I mean, when people when talk about touring with and stuff, is like the big part of it is like you want to be with like, yeah, easy hang, but friends and people that are supportive too because – it works both ways. There's been times when I've been touring with you that, like, you know, you've helped me out. Oh, we've been there person. for each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just like, ugh, yeah. But yeah, I, yeah. No, you, you had a very rough tour after your mother passed away, and you weren't in a great headspace. Oh, man, the first half of that tour, I was not a good, good tour partner. He wasn't. A, he wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't an easy young. <laughs> I broke. I broke a phone. and Amos a shin. <laughs> tried to fight Shandy. <laughs> he, 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 he fell. He fell over in a puddle. Right. Nah, nah, it was slippery, slippery bricks. <laughs> no, 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 so okay, okay. He, he he slipped over in Prague on a cobbled street yeah. that was wet, right? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. why I always think about like Americans, like I'm going to sue the council because this bit of concrete was raised. Try walking around Edinburgh in hills. Seriously, yeah. oh, I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so so he slips over and he falls in a puddle. And Amos, being a younger man, ah, I got is, hurt. Amos is a Amos, twenty-seven year old lad, full of piss and vinegar, and, he, and, and Forrest fell, and it was a, a real dramatic boof, like on the right. ground. I right? cut my legs through the jeans, like the jeans tore. It was bad. Oh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd yeah. be fine. In the yeah. end. And uh, and and Amos was walking with a cane. Now I had just, <laughs> I had, I had, I had just twisted my knee on a ski thing, like riding around uh, in a tube, yeah. right? And by the way, Amos and I are great friends. I mean, he's lived with me. Oh, you lived that with you after day, this. That day, we had walked all over Prague, like up into church steeples and bell- like we had a great day too. It was like, yeah. And so so I had this cane that was given to me because I had to do my brother's wedding right after I twisted my knee. And my brother got me a cane as a wedding gift, which was like this <laughs> black cane with like a silver skull on top of it. <laughs> like I was fucking, like I was Alice Cooper. Right. Right? Right? And, so, and I walked down the aisle with this limp with the cane and all that type of stuff, right? So then my, my knee healed up and then Amos had knee re- constructions and he goes oh i need a cane i go ha i'm, I'm I your guy you. <laughs> so i give amos this cane right so amos is walking along with this fucking cane and forrest slips over bang and forrest was already having like a you know he's having a rough week his mother just passed that sort of stuff so he, and so he goes like this, he goes fuck you. you you think this is funny you think this is funny <laughs> amos i knew to, I, it was funny but i knew you and everyone I you and the, shandy and slav had stopped laughing yeah I, I, like, I i laughed initially but i had the presence of mind to see that he was in a bit of pain and he was he was getting wetter by the second he was in the he was in the puddle he was drenched he'd hurt his leg and he wasn't very happy and then and then uh, amos continued to laugh like where it was stupid where he was just being a dickhead about it right and uh and forrest was like oh he's gonna stand up and just punch him like i'm, I'm gonna go for it right but then he was leg was so story he couldn't bat up that forrest reached into his pocket got his own phone <laughs> And, and like his his arms amazing <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, about- because he aimed for his weak knee. Oh, <laughs> right? oh wow! Right, right? He went for his knee that just had surgery, and he went bang. I, I was not aiming at his knee. I was well, just aiming at Amos. Well, it hit him. It hit him in the weak knee. I honestly just wanted to throw the phone because I was angry, right. and I didn't really want to injure Amos. But then yeah. when it hit him flush, I was like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> it cracked the screen on the phone. Yeah, it cracked. Yeah. It cracked the, it wow. cracked the screen on the phone and the screen the phone goes into a puddle so it's got water just seeping into it I, no... I had to get a new phone in Berlin oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Amos continues to laugh and <laughs> no. our, se- our security guy Slav big uh, Eastern European fella and he, he comes to me and he goes you'll take him away from this situation right? <laughs> He goes, so Shandy and me got into an Uber. Yeah, he goes. He goes. I will get to make sure he gets home. You, you have to remove Amos. You have to remove Amos right now. I don't know, but we didn't. I, Shandy and I got in an Uber, and I remember, you know, like when you've done something like that, and then you're shameful. But it was like that. We got in the Uber, and I like looked at all you guys, and I go, oh, I didn't handle that well. Yeah. And then just an Uber driving away, and you guys were walking on the cobblestone streets back to the hotel. Oh, uh, no, like, we were walking along, and I, I was laughing now just to myself because like, the phone was, it was all too much for me. But I was. I was I was keeping it on the down low, right? I was like, mm, yeah. mm, like that. And Amos is still laughing. I was like, shut the fuck up. We can still hear you. We're only 20 meters away. Once we get around that corner, <laughs> we can both laugh together. All right? <laughs> but until then, shut your fucking mouth, will you? Uh, and then the next morning, I walked downstairs and I, I was like, 
you know, full shame. But then I saw Slav, and he goes, "Oh, hey, what's going on?" I go, "I go, yeah, that that last night though, that people shouldn't have been laughing. It wasn't funny that I get injured." And he goes, eh, "It was pretty funny." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I had like a couple other breakdowns. It was. It was. I had a couple other. Remember, uh, there was like Shandy and me. Guy. I mean, I've you know, we're good. I, I'll, I'm good with all these people now. But Shandy, I got in there with Shandy at an airport, and at that same airport, I, I remember we had to. Cross the street in the rain. I think we were in Dublin. We we're flying to Scotland. Yeah, you get really and, dramatic in the rain. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're <laughs> right. crossing the street in the rain, and then I'm just standing, getting rained on, and they're just having me stand outside of an airplane. I'm like, why are they do? So I just came on the airplane. You guys are already on. I go, what is this fucking dumb airline? <laughs> <laughs> Making me stay in the goddamn rain, and this Irish, the flight attendant, literally, she goes, she was like, it was like, Air Lingus or something. Yeah, yeah. It was this firm, budget fucking yeah. sixty pound ticket we <laughs> yeah. had. Like this wasn't a high end airport. Yeah, but firm, but like nice. Firm, but like also like you better fucking check yourself. I go, that's fucking. She goes, is there a problem? Is I can't do an Irish. Is there a problem? I go, yeah, it's fucking in the rain. You know, I looked at you like, it's- yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, <laughs> now I'm on a plane. I go, when we took off, that lady, that like, yeah, I was still kind of like a, I was still dickish to her for sure. When we took off, she came over and like, you know, palmed two bottles of uh, of vodka to me. Like, here you go. Yep. Drink these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, thank you. You're so Great nice after I yelled at you. Like, like, <laughs> And then we got to Glasgow, and that's when you called. I remember I was in the hotel in Glasgow, and you called me, and you're like, "If you need to go home, I'll pay you for the gigs, whatever." But and I was like, "Nah, I'm good." I, but that's what I needed. I need someone to like. I, you called me, we had a conversation, and then from that moment on, I was fine. But it was the first week I was, I was just in a bad place. So, anyways, mental health. Anyway, <laughs> oh, if you go, and there's always. I imagine with bands and stuff, there's always someone what? going through a breakup. Yep. And always. when you're away always. from the situation, <laughs> yeah. and you like, you feel so helpless. Mm-hmm. You're in this other yep. city, and it's not like. Like, you know, like normally if you're on vacation, you're normally with your partner or something like that, but there's always someone going through a breakup. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's start talking to Misty. We've talked a lot here because we know a lot of this, but Misty, thanks for sitting yeah. there and listening to answer all these questions. How do you think Jim did? Zero through 10. I'm odd yeah. at his knowledge. Well, I mean, you know, I yeah. like, granted, I understand you do this, mm. but you hit a lot of those pretty spot on. All right. Which, this is my best top I mean, topic. <laughs> I can tell you, you know, from the artists that I've worked with for, you know, however long, most of them don't know a lot about what they do. They're just not that interested except for, you know, whatever that dollar sign is at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. And like, you you got it in the nitty gritty of some of those. Well, I think that I've had enough tour managers that I reckon, I don't think I could do the job tomorrow, but I think if you trained me up, I could do the job. I've seen I, enough people do it. You I think you could. It. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'd enjoy it. I'm no. disorganized. You would quit after a day or two. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, sleep no, I wouldn't you'd be sleep good at it. Because you got to be the first one up, too. you got to sleep That is also and true. Like, yeah. You have to send emails. Um, yeah. well, I'm normally pretty punctual. I'm not too bad with that. But I, you know. I, well, you did terrible on stand-up comedy, but you did good on touring. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't yeah. know anything about stand-up yeah. comedy. Um, Kelly, how do you do on confidence? Uh, I think he was really confident. Yeah. I'll give him a 10. Oh, what would you give him? I'm going to give him like a 9.5. 9.5. Hey. Wow. That's one of your highest scores. 19.5. I'll give you 20 for et cetera. You're, you're on your way home from the airport. Yeah. 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 I'll yeah. tell you, every yeah. time, and this just happened yesterday, every time I get into my house with my bags, and I you know do this all the time, my brain always says the same thing. You did it. <laughs> and like, so like mine. Yeah, but it's still but, but, but like there yeah. was a chance I wouldn't. Right. You know what I mean? Like you, you, made, it, you, you, you made it home again, like this homing pigeon. I yeah. mean, there is always a chance. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a chance of, you know, one of those questions, what what do you do when somebody gets sick? Sure, go or, ahead and answer it if you want now. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, or if somebody just decides they don't want to do it anymore, which yeah. kind of also ties into mental health because there have been a lot of artists these last few years that have put their tours on hold mid-tour. You mm-hmm. know, Shawn Mendes, Justin Bieber, Adele. who have just gone, <laughs> Adele, yeah. who mm. have said, I can't keep going right now because mm. I'm not able to put on the kind of shows that I want to put on with mm. my mental health the way that it is. Yeah. And you know, I think that <clears throat> that conversation has opened up so much more widely in these last like 5, 6 years mm. that people don't they're not as scared anymore to be like I'm struggling and I don't I don't want to keep oh, going. Oh, I, I said to my agents recently, I said I need to slow down and that's when I said on the podcast that, you know, I, I was planning on retiring from stand up and I, I, I don't know if I still believe in that. I think I'll always do stand up. I don't I think this is my last special. I just need to tour a little bit less mm-hmm. because I missed I missed my son's my eldest boy I missed half of his childhood yeah, I, you've I been just, a lot of I just missed years. it my, my career was where it was at and I had to put my pe- I never took my foot off the pedal yeah. 
Yep. And it's like now with this new baby, I'm like, and I watched that um, Dana Carvey show mm -hmm. one where he just stopped for a bit because his yep. kids were like, oh, I miss you. And it's just, it's a long way to be away. So when does the money outweigh what's good for the family or whatever? And you can't, when, when the kids are little, little, you can take them with you. And you can have this sort of family circus right. environment yeah. going on where you take the kids with you and they, they you know, I took Hank on a tour um, just uh, just when me and his mother was were breaking up and uh, and I said, oh, I want to spend some time with him and, you know, and uh, I took him on a tour when he was four and it was just me and him. <laughs> so I was about, and all around Australia and he just, he, he, the other comics really nice to him and the manager there and the tour guy was very nice. And they'd set up a little bedroom for him in each, in backstage oh. in each show and he'd just have to sleep there and then I'd pick him up. I'd pick him up, my arms asleep, and put him into the limo or the, the, the car and drive back to the hotel and take him. And that was just how we were. And I don't know if that was a good experience the for him. The bus tour, too. He was on part of that. Oh, yeah. he, came on, he came on part of the bus tour. We had, we had uh, Lenny Kravitz's old bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, or, or we rented it from Lenny Kravitz, right? So you don't buy a bus, but we rented it. I don't know it. if he owned it. He just was touring in it, right? It was all seashell themed and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Lenny loves I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's different ways of doing it. I do know some artists that get so comfortable in their buses oh, yeah? that they say, yeah, I'm going to buy this. Oh, and then they I'm rent it out to other people? Yeah. But, oh, okay. That's but that's idea. not the norm. Yeah. Like, Dolly Parton does that. Yeah. But she's Dolly Parton. I would like to be in Dolly Parton. Oh, yeah. She'd have yeah. a special... Hers is incredible. She'd have a wig <laughs> space. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, but he was on that. Just us. a room of bras. <laughs> and I remember the, the first night we were on there, uh, you put him in one of the bunks because they had the DVD players that would come down, mm. even though he was sleeping in the main bedroom with you. And, and he was watching... The t and he fell asleep in the bunk, so he just left him there. Yeah. And then I fell asleep in another bunk, and he woke up at like, I don't know, three oh, in the morning. Was, he was three at that stage. Yeah, he, yeah, three in the morning. He didn't know where he was, and he sure. just starts yelling. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I opened, there's a curtain on the bunk, like a little curtain, so I just pulled it back, and that's, I thought it'd be like, I was like, hey, Hank, it's okay. And He's even terrified. though he knew me and trusted me, he was like, ah! Like, even more. I still do that for him. Yeah. I still yeah. scream at three, three, three years old. Yeah, I, three I, I hear him scream. Hey, I jump up. I jump up naked. Open oh, yeah. the door. Yeah, I get I'm completely naked. Dead. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Come here, mate. Don't worry about Forrest. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was bad for me too. I mean, uh, there was a screaming kid plus your dick. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't in yeah. the yeah. best yeah. sleep for me. Back to bed. Um. So well, how does this work? Do we go yeah, through yeah. those questions? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But okay. we have the answers here, and I know a lot of times our guests will be able to look at it. So gotcha. why are music tours important for artists? So uh, Jim said because mu music is given away for free, and these days Jim promote the it. album. Um, yeah. You know, the the way that artists used to make music obviously was record sales, and with the an advent of streaming and you you definitely don't make the kind of money that you used to. You know, there's no mailbox money anymore the way that you used to have it. So. Touring and merchandise sales are the the two ways that artists get to bring home ca cash. And there's artists like you too, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. Who the show costs more than yes. the ticket sales. The only thing they're making oh, it off yeah. is the t-shirts. When you're an artist like you too, you can do that. I you should know? sell merchandise. There's money I leave on the table, but I just uh, can't be asked. Again. It's a, it's a, it's definitely a huge revenue stream yeah. for artists these days. You don't have to do it. You just, you oh. get yeah. The all you yeah. have to do is approve the designs, and then you send it to yeah. the venues, and yeah. they sell it for you. Yeah. You know, there's there's definitely easy ways of doing it. But yeah, you nailed it. Well, it's, that's how artists make me. Why are you saying you too can do? Oh, because they've had made money in the past. The or? Zoo Roper tour, they they weren't it's, making cash off. They were running at a yeah. loss for each show, yeah. if not for the t shirts. That but was the one with like the arm. They, stage, he came right? out of a lemon. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, that was yeah. the last one with the arm. Yeah. 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 Um, because I mean, some artists like they've made enough money that they're fine and. They hit a point where they're like, I'm gonna go out solely to entertain people. Yeah. Like this isn't a money making venture. And so they'll dip into their own pockets hmm. to pay for the production aspects. And yeah. there are also artists too that as you know, as they move up the food chain, it becomes really competitive. It's like, oh, I wanna make a stage like no one's ever seen before yeah. and I don't care if I have to pay for part of that. You know, like I think it's 50% of your, your touring money goes towards the production generally yeah. on a music tour because we do have anywhere yeah. from three semis to, I've done tours that have had 
I think the Metallica tour, the last one I did, had 34 semis. Wow. Mm, and oh shit. Where Holy do you park crap. all these things? <laughs> it's, I mean, it's amazing oh, I, watching I, those I, semi drivers. When I, when I was doing like Australia and we had those big screens on top of stuff, there was there was semi drivers. It's probably like six or seven semis. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a lot of six, or, six or seven. Yeah. And they, they loaded them all up. And then they, they I think they had them in two runs because one of them had to drive across to Perth. That's yeah. New, that's New York to LA. Yeah, it is. Right. Yeah, yeah. And they they had yeah. to drive across, and then we're just like, "All right, see you later." <laughs> hey, you're doing a great job. <laughs> you, know, like, you, you definitely like. I mean, I like- you don't really know those people. Like, it's you know, it's not that you don't you know you say hello and all that type of stuff. The artist mm-hmm. doesn't, but yeah. I'm assuming but the, the torment. crew, the yeah. crew, and, yeah, the crew. Yeah. Like you know, some crew members you yeah. don't know other crew members, but you don't you know you try to be as nice and polite to everybody as possible. But there was one really very attractive woman that worked on that crew that yeah. I would see at Ayrton's. She, <laughs> stood, she stood out because you were like, you're dismantling a stage right now? And she was like, hey, and you are like, oh, oh, the, very, the second, very The second that last person leaves that arena or that, that you know, that whatever it is, they oh, yeah. fu- they're fucking dismantling. They're not, they're, oh, they're not waiting an hour. They're mm-hmm. breaking down that stage within seconds. I yeah. mean, I, I've done tours where you start breaking down elements of the stage while the artist is still on stage. Mm. Once they're done with it, wow. you move it off stage and start putting it into trucks. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, what, who invented music tours? Who started this? We... Um, I'm, so the first answer, vaudeville, yeah. probably not. Mm. It went earlier than that. It was definitely... I would say, you know, the early composers. Mm. We didn't call them tours because we weren't obviously around to call them tours. But yeah, they played shows in in other places and other. Oh, than, like Mozart, maybe? Or? <laughs> yeah, hmm. yeah, like the the early greats. Yeah, yeah but the conductors would have it go out. Mozart yeah. would yeah. conduct his own music. Would they name the tours? They'd be like, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Mozart, no, no, the, Mozart the, takes Mozart Germany. Moist. So the, the tours were the names of the operas. I know, but so I'm just we're, kidding. we're yeah. doing the magic yeah. flute or whatever, yeah. and then he'd come out and they're like, yeah. they're like powder up his wig and off yeah. Yeah. Five yeah. Tour. They're like ten cents for a t-shirt. Are you kidding me? It's fucking <laughs> ridiculous. It's made yeah, out of. They re- didn't even have cents back then. What do you reckon Mozart's merch was? I reckon, <laughs> I reckon those wigs. little those little busts of him that people put on pianos yeah, yeah. or the wigs. You powdered wigs. I was going to say too many t-shirts. Everyone is wearing wig. powdered wigs. That's <laughs> <laughs> like that, that wasn't something flashy. Yeah, but his head Mozart, Mozart style. style. Yeah. Wine cup. It was like a you know wine cup that Mozart on it. <laughs> yeah, some koozies. <laughs> yeah, like a t-shirt in the front that said Mozart in the back. It goes dum 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 dum. I cleaned up. Uh, stadium tours. I think Jim said the Beatles. Jim nailed it on that one too. Yeah. Uh, the Beatles were definitely the first to do a stadium tour. Um, yeah, they just couldn't sell enough tickets. Now, there's an interesting yep. story about the Beatles that the Beatles uh, they toured Australia at the height of Beatlemania. So they they just done the Ed Sullivan show, and then the next stop was Australia. Now, most artists didn't go to Australia, but they so happened to have booked these gigs in Australia before they were famous. Wow. When there was just a bloke in Australia who was like, oh, can we have a Liverpool band come out? Oh, we've got a band. <laughs> okay, bring them out. And they just had, like, these gigs. These are venues that are too small for me to play mm-hmm. in Australia. Like, these are little tiny venues, and they stay in there. And, and, and the Beatles, bless them, they kept their contract, and they got paid the amount of money they were going to be wow. paid for the tour. They, they didn't change. They'd already booked it in. And Ringo... That's amazing. Ringo had, I believe... He was having his tonsils taken out, and he wasn't on the tour. And they had this other bloke <laughs> who drummed for him for half the tour, and then Ringo came down by himself. Right? From Men at Work? No, yeah. He was, <laughs> just, <laughs> he was, just, a, he was just a bloke who, who had gotten the job like... He found out about the job three weeks earlier, and he tried to grow his hair as much as he could. <laughs> <laughs> like, his hair was down like that. He was giving it a go. That's amazing. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if that bloke played for a band. I've never seen him or heard from him again since, but he probably should write a book. They're probably yeah. He probably has written a book. Movie. Sure. Could do a movie. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he, he, got to, he got to drum for Ringo. And Ringo said in one of the documentaries that he felt a bit upset about it, that they didn't call that bit of the tour off. And that's how replaceable yeah. a Jimmy drummer. Nickel. Yeah. Jimmy Nickel. There he is. And you can yeah. see what he's done. He's put his Hair down. Yeah, he obviously had the quafty <laughs> Elvis bit. And he, he dead? Uh, oh yeah, he did not. He could not grow it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't have it in time. Uh, is he dead? Um, Probably. Uh, b- 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 what is the estimated global value of the live music industry? Jim says five hundred billion. So 
I'm going to base this. During the pandemic, I did a lot of research on this. And I know that in 2020, we lost $30 billion. Mm. So I'm going to double that and say that it's about $60 billion. $60 billion. Okay. A year? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You think that's low? I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I think worldwide, I think that might be the American. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Because I feel worldwide. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, mind you, I had one period of my life where I was on the on the, what's it, a Polestar. Yeah, Polestar. I'm, I made the cover of Polestar. Look at you. And, <laughs> uh, Polestar is an industry magazine that yep. set, that that lists all the figures and 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 how much tickets everyone's selling uh-huh. and that type of stuff. And there was one month of my career where I was the fifth biggest selling artist of any artist Damn. in America for just one month. Yeah. And that's as high. Now I wouldn't be in the top fucking hundred, but <laughs> but I had I, I had one month where I was just gigging every day. It's, it's I, I think a cool it was during the bus. The it, bus it was during the bus tour. Yeah. yeah so like, I, I'd made it. Yeah. I get really excited when I look at the pole star and like one of my tours is on it. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, I've I, been I, on a couple that have been the top grossing of the year, and uh, yeah, yeah. I was just for that month. I got the cover just well, for that month. What percentage of Americans attend live shows at least once per year? Jim said 55. I think you nailed it. It's totally somewhere. It's over 50, but yeah. under 60. Yeah. Yeah. I I wasn't attending a lot of live shows in the last two years. I've attended a ton. I don't know. What yeah, that's because you, you always, missed it for a few years. I guess. You always you go see one. Yeah. And then you, you like little kids aren't <laughs> seeing them. The real old aren't seeing them. And I think most people see one. So about 55. Yeah. I think. Well, and I mean, there are a lot of things that we kind of forget to take into account that comedy shows or live shows it's not just music oh, it's not just me you it, if I you mean, tour right now with coco Mellon, podcast the live podcast the, no but the thomas mm-hmm. the tank engine tours and stuff totally. they, they sell out the yeah. wiggles mm-hmm. the wiggles the sell wiggles. out fucking arenas yep. and they have done for, for years. 30 fucking years yeah for 30 and they were a band they were a band yep. the wiggles before they were they were in the charts they were called the cockroaches <laughs> and they had a couple of hits. Not as good of a name for a kid. <laughs> no, they, they, definitely they, not. They had, I think I believe they had two top ten hits. Uh, she's the one, and she's some kind of girl. Was their two hits? And uh, you know, Jeff was on the keyboards, and <laughs> and Anthony who was like the lead singer, and he did a thing where he jumped and kicked his legs out, and they were a little bit like rolled up denim shirts yeah. and quaffs. They were a little bit like uh, punky sort of uh, anyway. Um, and they had a couple of hits, and then like the band, and I went, I saw the cockroaches. Because they had two hits at a local sort of pub where they were performing. And I was like, ah, oh, it felt sad, this band that was all over. And the next year they reinvented them. And I was about 14. The next year they reinvented themselves as the yep. Wiggles. And I think they would hold the record for being the biggest selling Australian artists of all time in any genre for anything yep. ever. Wow. You are correct yeah. on that. I have yeah. a, my, a friend of mine used to tour manage them. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they got so big that then they just brought in other wiggles oh yeah because they got too <laughs> old supplementary yeah. wiggles they brought in a female wiggle and a couple yeah. of other wiggles because it, it got sadder and sadder because they were always wearing turtlenecks and they, they're old men now yep. they're like 60 year old guys yep. and then, you know and I mean there's also like you know think about the ice capades things yeah. like that that's yeah. still a live show Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Like D- Disney, Disney on ice right, and right. Disney on ice and all that type of yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. There are all of those, you know, I mean, all of the like seasonal things that come out, like TSO, Trans Siberian Orchestra. Oh, yeah. You know, there are families that go and see that every single year. What about that dancing thing that's meant to be a cult? It's Yen Shen or something. Shen Oh, yeah. All the shows. Yeah. Yeah, you're not meant to go to it. They try to sign you up for something. Oh, yeah. They always advertise that they're kicking up with dresses. There's always a billboard around for Shen Yang or Whatever it is. <laughs> Always. Yeah. Um, how are tours set up? Jim said a lot of things uh, there. But you, Jim, you know what? Jim pretty much nailed it on that one, too. Um, I'm impressed with how into detail he was able to go on that. Because a lot of artists, you know, after they get the phone call and confirm, hey, yes, I do want to go on tour and here's the, the time, they pretty much just leave it up to other people to handle. You know what I think it is, though? Because with comedy, I think with music tours, you're separated more from a lot of the stuff. Because a lot of times we're just like in a car. It's me and Jim, right. the it's other opener, and then the tour manager, and that's hundreds. it. And yeah. so we, you hear a lot of things, too. Like you'd be like, like the tour manager, he'll just be like, yeah, I got to get there by noon or one. Right. We're like, oh, really? Like, yeah. I'm just going to go to sleep in the hotel. But, I yeah. think in music, there's... We hear a lot of the phone calls. Yeah. yeah. Like in music, there's... There's so much planning that goes into place in the creative of all of it. Yeah. Um, you know, 
it's not the 70s anymore where you could get on stage with a piano and a park can. You know, you have to have lifts and automation. And, mm. you know, I mean, most of the tours that I have gone out on have upwards of 100 people on them. You yeah, know, yeah, in yeah, all yeah. these different capacities, lighting, audio, video, pyro. So, you know, there's so much planning that goes into place. And, you know, the, the creative directors have conversations with the artist and, you know, show them all the things, whether they like them or not. But really the first time that an artist sees that is when they show up for rehearsals. Yeah. So that's why that kind of, you know, the artist after they say, yeah, I want to do it. I mean, basically they get some weekly updates on sales numbers and things like that. Yeah, you get, yeah I get updates Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I look at this graph like it's going to affect my life. Right. <laughs> I, I, at 6.30, I get him and I look at him. Oh, this may be a bit like I can, oh, sales like are I low can, over here. What like can I do? Like I can do anything. Right. There's nothing right. to be done. There's yeah. no, do an extra post. Oh, God. Fuck, right. that's going to do anything. I have fucking 10 people following me in fucking Stockholm. You think a post is going to... By the way, Stockholm sold out. Thank you. Everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, and then... Uh, I, I remember we were in like in the airport lounge and Lord Huron was there. I didn't know who they were. I could see they were a band. Mm -hmm. They had all their instruments. And I, I like them a lot. I just don't know what they look like. And I remember I said, excuse me, you guys, you're in a band, right? And they're like, yeah, we're a band called Lord Huron. I was like, oh, I have you on my phone. But the reason I asked them is I was listening to their conversation and they were talking about pyrotechnics yep. and lights and this and that. And I was like, yeah, we need a stool and <laughs> yep. a microphone. It's, and, I'm not going to lie. It's my dream someday to do a comedy tour and to call for the advance and be like, I need yeah. one lighting tech and yeah. a stool. Yeah, yeah. Like my, my advance calls too. take two chair or three hours. Don't yeah, forget I, the bottle of water. I, 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 oh, and I, the bottle I, of water. I asked for a chair, and I, I always like like a sort of like a, you know like one of those Chesterfield chairs is a good. Yeah. I like a deep I'm sort on, of. Yeah. I'm on all the email chains. You want to throw? Then you send the chair options. And the, 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 <laughs> the chair options. My favorite one. Big chair guy. My favorite, yeah. my favorite one ever chairs. was I once I once showed up to a place and they just done a production of The King and I. Uh, oh yeah, that was in uh, New Jersey. That yeah, was the yeah. fire oh alarm one. And I got and I got the, the, the throne from the king of us. <laughs> that's a good and, one. And it's like it looks uh, like that's what I travel with. Yep. And you I, should request thrones from oh, now on. Just, that would be the, the, epic. Back, the back of the chair was at least six foot high with all eight type yeah. of things like that. And so I sat in it and it sat bolt upright and had thronely type of things and You should borrow the Foo Fighters throne. On your next Wasn't tour. that the one that they borrowed for ACDC for when um, when when Axl Rose broke his Guns leg? Guns N' Roses, yeah. Yeah, Guns N' Roses. He borrowed it from the Foo Fighters. Yeah, but he, he used that on the ACDC tour. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, the, oh, because when Dave Grohl broke his leg. Right. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. They're breaking their leg. A, these yeah, guys. throne it was, of guitar. <laughs> it, was, it was the same yeah. throne for the ACDC. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He just did that whilst he was sitting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that show goes on. Like Thrones for Jim only from here on out. Yeah, Jack, get on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> working on it. Yeah, yeah, I, don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't know yeah. if I pay. I'll tell you what, what does happen. There's a thing like riders. You've probably all heard about riders. And there's this there's this mythology that goes around a rider that like they're, they're only no brown M&Ms. That's mm -hmm. the classic, yes. right? The classic. Yes. And that someone wants an ice sculpture and someone wants a this and someone wants a that. I don't know if you know, even in like arenas, the dressing rooms are very small. There's sometimes there's a bigger room, like a green roomy type thing. But this idea that we're all backstage with groupies and all that type of stuff. Chocolate fountains. Chocolate fountains. <laughs> it's a load of rubbish. I'll tell you what my rider is right now. <laughs> Six sugar-free Red Bulls. Mm -hmm. Two Dr. Peppers. <laughs> a six pack of Heineken. Yep. For the people, a bottle of vodka and a bottle, a large bottle of pineapple juice yeah. is what I get. And you don't even drink anymore. That's right. like Friday. I, don't drink. I just have the anymore. vodka and the beer for the other people I, I who, who might come in, backstage. One of your tour managers had, they're, they're very brief. They were with you for like two tours. They're like, what chocolates does he want? I, we're trying to find European oh, one chocolates. Time, the European yeah, chocolates. We, we started one getting time, chocolates now. Yeah, yeah, one, I don't know where time, that came from. one time somebody, <laughs> somebody put some Lindor balls, a packet of Lindor balls in there. <laughs> no, Outback's been doing that. What happened was, one person just had them back there and I went, 
I like the chocolates. That was a nice touch. <laughs> and then ever since then, <laughs> and, I, I think, and I don't, European I think, European chocolate. And then somebody, somebody then put in some Hershey's, and Hershey's is shit. <laughs> and so I, I said, oh, I only like European Australia. I like Cadbury's, which is your base, basic bitch chocolate in yep. Australia and Britain. That's me yep. chocolate of choice. But now it's like he needs European <laughs> chocolates because I'm going to focus and, and be so, like, we're in a small town, we can't find any European chocolate. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> so, so, so we get well, Garibaldi if all else fails. <laughs> <laughs> is the one because that's American I believe yeah. Gar- yeah. Gar- yeah. Gar- yeah. Gar- Gar- yeah. Deli, right? Gar- Deli. so anyway so for the longest time there I was getting uh, someone said to me would you like a meat platter like a crudite platter and I went sure and then one time I decided I'm going to look into my budgets of my shows one time it's I good. was <laughs> I was paying $150 a show <laughs> for this meat platter and I literally would have a slice of salami each day yep. And then maybe a chunk of cheese. And then half of it. And I went, get rid of the fucking meat platter. It's because they they charge you at their, like, every arena has a, like, an in-house catering. Mm. Um, And so they charge you at the rates that they would charge to cater, like, the sweets upstairs for Uh, all the fancy people. You know, it's basically you're getting a, a bottle service meat tray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, no, and, yeah. and then some meat trays were like this, and yeah. some were like this. Absolutely. It was all the same price. Wasn't yeah. there a guy one time that got offended that you didn't eat the meat tray? Was that you? No, yeah, okay, that's a different thing, right? <laughs> so what, what happened there was I went to play my father's okay, so I did a big tour of Australia. Oh, yeah, I, I was doing I was doing, you know, like six, seven thousand seaters and stuff like that. It wasn't as big as the tour before. It was a big tour. And uh, I did the Taramara Bowling Club, Lawn Bowls, right? My father's a lawn bowler there. My father's 82. He's one of the younger members, right? <laughs> so so all of these bowling mates and I, and so from the ticket sales, I could fit 150 people in. There was maybe 10 grand coming in. And I said, give it to the bowling club. Let them buy new yeah. beer taps or something. You know what I mean? So I was donating it all to the, I was doing this for free. Completely free. And just so my dad could have all of his mates come to a show. Sure. And I thought, it was just a nice little thing. And we made sure we put it on the tour of T-shirts. We put it on the tour. Week. So, so we go to the Sydney <laughs> Entertainment Centre, uh, the Brisbane Arena, and like this, the Taramara Bowling Club. <laughs> <laughs> right? It was in there, right? So anyway, so Amos is there. I've got a couple of stories. So my wife was in the audience and she was sitting next to my father. My, on one side of it was my father and one side was my brother. And uh, Amos Gill was on stage, and he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, he goes, um, he goes, yeah, oh, you know when you're googling Pornhub like this, right? So he's talking about Pornhub and how you get porn on Pornhub and all this type of stuff. <laughs> anyway, my dad pulls a pad out of his pocket, and he writes down Pornhub, <laughs> <laughs> and he puts the pad back in, right? But anyway, so we get there, and they, they've cleared out a little room which was basically a closet to put their stuff in for the bowling club to put mops and brooms and shit in right they cleared it out and then my manager said I'll get him a meat platter for the staff get him some red bulls and get him some this and they put them in an ice bucket like that now the room was so small that I was like well I this is the suburb I grew up in I had friends and family out in the audience there's only 150 people so before the show I was just living amongst the crowd you know saying hello and taking photos with people like this this old bloke comes up to me. <laughs> I, I remember I'm giving the money to the bowling club. This is, a, this is a charitable thing I'm doing. And this old bloke walks up to me and he goes, you haven't fucking touched the meat platter, have you? <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, sorry? He goes, we went to a lot of effort to put that in the room for you. We got you your fucking Red Bulls. We, he, goes, he goes, we don't even sell them here. <laughs> I had to go out to a shop. <laughs> right? And so I was like, oh, God. And so I, so I turned to Amos and this other guy, Rudes, that, that tours with me in Australia. And I said, I said, boys, we've got to go in there and eat some meat. <laughs> or I, or I'm, I'm going to get in trouble. I was, like, I was pouring Red Bull down the sink, you know. You had to see empty cans. Right? But anyway, so this old like this old English bloke who bowls with my dad, and he's probably eighty five or something like that, and he's he's got a red face, drinks a lot of time and stuff. He goes, he goes, Jim, come over here, come over here. And I said, yes, mate. I met him a few times. He's made of my dad's, and he goes, yeah, don't worry about that bloke. He's a cunt. <laughs> he's, he's always been a cunt. He's not going to change now. Uh. <laughs> Um, what are the main duties of a tour manager? Is it uh, hotels, food, make sure you show up on time, babysitting artist? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, all of those things. <laughs> yeah. um, it's definitely travel heavy, um, you know, depending upon 
what size artist you work with. Like I said, a comedy tour is my dream someday to book flights for three people. Dropping a lot of hints here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't have to be this no, I'm, one, I'm, any of them. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, I've, I've done tours, you know, my last Metallica tour, I booked travel for, we were making a movie and it was 250 people. Uh, oh, so the hotels, did you get to travel well, all well, the ground transport. Well, yeah. Okay, when oh, I said God. earlier that the opening yeah. acts and all that have to be an easy hang, the person who has to be the easiest hang is you. Yes, you yeah. have to be yes. the most. It's. I mean, it definitely. I've learned over the years. I need to have a thick skin. First mm. of all, people are never when you're booking things for that many people. There's always going to be someone that has to throw a wobbler about something. Mm -hmm. My rooms at the wrong end of the hotel, or. Oh. You know, shit like that, that yeah. you're just like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, no, all, all if you're I, a lighting guy number seven, I, yeah. I don't they, fucking they, care. They, they, they always give me a suite, but I don't really need the suite. I just need a bed. Right. My most important thing is early check-in, late check-out. Absolutely. So you can put me in a bunk bed. Yep. I just need early check-in, so early check-out. get into the and, room. And if, the, if you can make the curtains black out, I don't know why so many hotels Ugh. don't. This should be the first feature of a hotel. Make the room dark. Yep. 100%. Let just me be for, sad just in the shits dark. and gigs. Just yeah. fucking make it dark for you. <laughs> so that people can sleep. Yeah, so you Crazy don't wake concept. up at 6 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I, I don't necessarily know that people think about this really often, but when you're traveling around the world, the amount of jet lag in different places that mm -hmm. you're in. The only, in the, any, the, like, the, only, the only time even? I really take Xanax is to yeah. get me through jet lag. Yep, so I'd be absolutely. ready for a gig. And so I don't yeah. take it in when I'm at home or anything like yeah. that. But like every now and again, you're like, if I don't sleep now, I'm going to be fucked for the show. Yep. I'm going to be too yep. tired for the show. I yeah, just, for, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, I just came back from Australia two weeks ago and it took me a full week to get over my jet lag. It's coming it, back is that, so that rough. Way, that way, no problem. That way, that, no problem. Going to? Going because to, you're no problem. basically going forward a day and a couple of hours. Well, it's because you like, leave at 11 a.m. Yeah. You, 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 got, you got a 14-hour flight. Yep. You sleep for, say, six hours because it's a plane. You're never going to get a full eight, right? Yep. You watch a few movies, and then you land at 6 a.m. <laughs> And so yeah. it feels like, oh, I just had a sleep. And so I'm going over yeah. the flight. And you go to bed at like 9, 8, 9, right. 9 p.m. that night. Right. Right? Yeah. But coming back is that kind of a it's thing. It's horrible. Like we came back. We left Perth at like 10 o'clock at night. And oh, flew you, overnight. you went from Perth. Perth to Sydney. Yeah. Um, so, oh, you know, the time right. change, we land in Sydney at 6 in the morning. And then we had a four-hour layover yeah. which turned into an eight-hour layover. Well, what happens is oh. your, flight, your flight coming back from Australia is at like 7 a.m. Right. So, and so you're awake the whole time. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's the longest bloody flight yeah, in the world. It and, really like, is. Like traveling yeah, with the baby, because I've done it with the baby a couple of times now. Ooh. Going over, no problem. That baby sleeps the whole time. Coming back, you it's have you have a fucking one and a half year old on a plane. And to all those people who get upset about babies, go fuck yourself. Because it's you were a baby <laughs> once. I understand if someone doesn't, but I understand if someone doesn't like a dog, right? You know, I'm not a dog person. You brought your bloody dog on the plane. But we're all people. It's like, it's like, do you think the parents are having a whale of a time? Right. Do you think we're sitting back with our babies like, oh, cry away. <laughs> this is heaven for me. I had this air stewardess get into my wife. Uh, um, this is one time that fame really turned a situation around for me very quickly. Uh, I, so so my, the baby was about four months old or something like that. It, it just it shat itself as babies did, right? We're in business class. We have these little cubicle door things. So, so my wife goes, oh, Jen, I go, okay, just do it in the thing. Just, just do it in the seat, right? This is a smell involved. To, yeah. You know. A little bit. It's life, <laughs> right? But we swap, the, we swap the, the diaper over very quickly. And then she gives it to me. Then my job is to go. So I'm holding a handful of shit now. Mm -hmm. My job is to go to the bathroom <laughs> and dispose of it. She changes the nappy. The, I take over the reins. I go dispose of this thing. Anyway, this, this air steward, she comes and goes, you are not allowed to change a diaper in there. No one complained. They put us in a section with other kids, right? No one complained. It wasn't anyone complained. She just wanted to go for it like this, right? And so I'm standing there. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm really, you know how it is, babies, blah, blah, blah. You know how it is like this. And then, then another air stewardess goes, me and my husband just watched you the other day. We think you're fantastic. <laughs> and then she put her hand out and went, I'll take that for you. <laughs> I, I went from being the worst person in the world to handing a lady a bag of shit. Um, I'm going to jump ahead here a little bit. What's the longest tour in history? Jim said Elton John, Gillerick Roto, or Guns N' Roses? Um, I definitely know that he's right about Guns N' Roses during that, that era. Um, 
but I'm going to go with a different one and probably for a different reason. I think it's the Grateful Dead because they've mm. just never stopped. Yeah. Like for 20 years, they've but is just... But is the tour the same tour? <laughs> I, I they don't, don't think that they them. name their tours. Yeah. It's just like they just keep going They might and do what you want to do. Just go, going. it's 2022 tour. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I right. hate naming tours. <laughs> They ring yeah. me up. They go, what's the name of this tour? And it's always a show that you haven't even written. Mm -hmm. yep. When the tickets are on sale, I haven't written the fucking show. Yep. And so I'm like, what do you want to call it? Oh, I don't know. Right. And this one, give them what they want. <laughs> <laughs> give them what they want. We're coming to you, Europe. Give them what they want, yep. tour. I'm going to give you what you want. Yep. I think you're it's, right with a Grateful Dead. I think uh, like, I just don't think they've ever stopped. That, least, yeah. You know? And then who's the most toured artist? Is it Paul McCartney? I mean, he, Jim is definitely right. You can go see Paul McCartney anytime you want, anywhere, yeah, and not have to follow him or like yeah, plan yeah. out a trip. Like Paul McCartney constantly tours. I also feel the same about Elton John. And you're right. Like this but goodbye El tour El El has El 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 been Paul never ending. Paul McCartney's a decade older. Yeah. And and Elton's just retired. Paul McCartney will die on stage. Right. He has no. What about Bob Dylan? Also, Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan doesn't tour that much, though. I mean, he he does he? But he's been doing it for so long. Like, I wonder yeah. if you add in like when he was younger and he did tour a lot. Yeah, I, know, I, 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 I it's got to be Paul McCartney. Well, because he calls his tours things like this, like the go. Uh, What's his last tour called? It was something like uh, Get In or something. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was actually. Yeah, it was yeah. something like Get On with Paul McCartney, right. and then it's like. He doesn't even play any new songs. No. The, all the tours no. are the same. He plays Live and Let Die and the fireworks go off exactly the same yep. way. He plays Hey Jude right before the encore and we all yep. go, na, 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 and we all have a good time. <laughs> then he comes out for the encore. He'll open up on a song that's normally upbeat. So it'll be like Drive My Car yep. or something mm -hmm. like that. And then he'll have a little bit in the middle where he'll play something on the ukulele, like the song something, as an ode to uh, um, George Harrison. And he'll yep. tell the story about how... I've seen him do it seven yep, times. Absolutely. George gave me this ukulele, you know, yep. something in the way she moved. Like that. And then he'll do... Um, if you were with us, um, if you are with me now, whatever, the, uh, the song that he wrote about John Lennon dying, that he wrote past, and you know, the pictures of John up, and then he goes back into a high, beat, a high end bit. Then he'll give us Jet, and then we all go... All right. Yep. Yeah, Jet. That's a long uh, encore. Da, 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 da. Oh, he plays for for, for a man in his, for a man <laughs> his eighties. So he does like I think Springsteen does a longer show, but yeah. it couldn't be by much. Like he doesn't. He, I, I tell you, who's the genius of touring? Billy Joel. I, I, I go to Madison Square Garden. 27 which, nights. Yeah, I go to Madison Square. And he does it once a month now. Absolutely. He yep. lives. He lives ten miles away from the venue. Yep. He goes home and he plays to arena, does the same thing. They reckon he, they reckon they can time to the second when he's going to get off stage. 100%. Like he just knows. And he went to Australia and he went, I don't want to, uh, fuck, I don't want to tour. He's just got little kids. He's got little twins, I believe, at the moment, right? And so he's like, oh, I just want the kids to like hold a koala or something. Um, <laughs> uh, and, he like, and he's like, I'll just do the, the cricket stadium, which, which is like 100,000 in the seats plus the yep. floor. It's 130,000. I'll do one gig in Australia. You come. To me. You come to me, yeah. That's the way to do it's, it. You know what? That's actually uh, gaining popularity with a lot of artists. Like if you think about the amount of artists that have what they call Vegas residencies now. You know, it I'd started with the whole like Celine Dion thing where she was like, "I'm just going to play here forever." And then you know, Lady Gaga, Britney Spears, Shania like, Twain, Shania Twain, I, I, and they're also yeah. Adele. They're, they're purpose-built yeah. theatres where they Absolutely. can have effects that will sit there every single yep. day, so they can spend more on the stage because the yep. money's going to work. We saw you Elton John's it. Red Piano oh, yeah. tour one yeah. there. It was oh, yeah. completely different from yeah. the other one. You know what I mean? When you take out the travel aspect of you know traveling all of that production from city to city. You get a lot more in your pocket at the end of the day. And oh, yeah. it's I, Vegas. I, I, so. would, I would love it. I, yeah. I, if, I would move to Vegas if you said, oh, I've got a residency there. I'd do Absolutely. it tomorrow. But I, yeah. it, with comics, it's, there's only been a few comics that have ever really successfully done that. And I don't, yeah. I don't think I'm the guy for that job. I don't think I've got enough pull um, on it. Now. It's, I can say it's definitely a roadie's dream come true to get yeah, those gigs. I, like, yeah. oh, I don't have to. I get one hotel also, room for well, six months. Also, Great. Yeah, but not even that. Yeah, the venue is in your hotel. Yeah. You, you can come walk down, to work. You come <laughs> down through the, the maintenance elevator 
through the back to the back stage yeah. and go back up to your room. And you're like, it's so yeah, lovely. It's fucking fantastic. <laughs> let's uh, let's yeah. talk a little bit about mental health. Uh, Missy is going to be featured in this book called Touring and Mental yeah. Health, the Music Industry Manual. Um, and, you know, I asked you about it, Jim, and obviously said, not good. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's, 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 any, it's any time you have to do something like that. Yeah, yeah you can rough. talk about it a little bit it's, and talk yeah. about the book if you I want. Mean, yeah. I think there's probably a little bit of a difference with comedy and music. Um, you know, for roadies that are out on music tours, your days can be 18, 20 hours, mm. and then you hop in the bus. It ta- You know, after everyone leaves, it takes a good three hours to tear everything down, put it in the trucks, and, you know, get a shower, hop in the bus. You get four hours of sleep. You wake up in the next city, and you go, well, we got to get the shit loaded back in again. And it's 18 trucks of stuff. So you start at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. Mm. And that's what it looks like. And your days off are either spent on the bus traveling to a further city because some booking agent did really terrible routing. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, you're in a hotel room. And at that point, you're so depleted that all you can do is sit in your hotel room and, like, zone out on some stupid TV show and order room service because you don't. First of all, you're also, yeah, yeah, you're surrounded by people in the bus. You've got, you know, 11, 12 people on a bus. And the smell gets bad. Oh, my God. (laughs) Don't even get me started on the the smell of the One of the things that I, I I think I was, I think it was, I'm friends with Kerry King from Slayer, right? I think Kerry told me, it was either him or it was Tim Ferriss from In Excess, but one of them told me that the big thing was that they just bought a pallet of socks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Socks are one use and one use only. <laughs> yep. You wear them, Throw you away. chuck them out. You wear them, you chuck wow. them out. That, that keeps the bus at a, a reasonable smell. <laughs> I have literally gone through the hallway of a bus and picked up shoes and thrown them outside and or in the trash. Yeah. I don't know whose they were and I don't care. <laughs> like nothing that smells that bad belongs where you sleep. Yeah, yeah. Ever. Yeah. I don't know. Um, my wife still. I still, <laughs> <laughs> I still keep her around. I don't. We weren't allowed so, to take a shit on the bus either. That nobody was, is. Okay. I mean, there there are buses that have what's called a grinder. Yeah. It's still absolutely <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> what is a grinder? So you have the tank that is underneath the toilet uh-huh. where all of the liquids Feces. or solids go. It's supposed to be liquids. Um. And it has like a garbage disposal in it that grinds it up mm, and turns, turns it into up. liquid. Yum. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't <laughs> still just. Oh, sit I do in that in my tank. body. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have an internal grinder. <laughs> <laughs> but it like, I mean, that, you know, the bus drivers stop whenever they're able to and dump those tanks. But that doesn't mean that that doesn't sit there. Yeah. And so that smell is going to come up into the bus the same way. Um, I feel like grinding it would make it smell more. It's the only only way to get it out. It has to be liquid to dump out of the tank. (sighs) I went went through. uh, 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 I would like to do that. So (laughs) after the Jim Jeffrey show, I wanted to start wearing like suit jackets and shirts on stage, which I've done for the last couple of specials. And... You know, a lot of the reason why I wore the leather jacket was bec- like early on in my career was because I was poor and I just wanted to have one outfit that I could take everywhere and look the same all yep. the time, you know. So I'd spend money in one jacket and then wear it till it stinks and chuck it out. <laughs> and um, uh, But on the road, I don't know how Jimmy Carr does it. Jimmy Carr, my friend, he's always in a perfectly pressed suit. It looks fucking perfect. Fuck that. I'm trying you know traveling. Does it? Somebody I'm, like me. <laughs> oh, no. I, I can't. I can't look nice. I just got to go t shirt. Last can't. time you had a suit, you had to fly me to New York with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. Some Jimmy Carr's tour manager go. is probably doing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's stealing that. I don't know. That. Jimmy's, like, a, Jimmy's a fucking. He's an orderly fella, mate. Okay. He, he, he's, the only, he he's the only person I know on earth that could get that done right by himself. Um, <laughs> this is the. Yeah. Uh, Part of our show. Oh, I'm sorry. The 300 nights in just over two years touring Guinness Book oh. World Records. Um, I am not going to lie. I had to look this up. Yeah. Because sure. I did not know the answer to this either. And it surprised me. It was 30 Seconds to Mars. What? Who were they? For 30 Seconds Jared to Mars. Jared, Jared Leto's, Leto's band. band. Oh, really? Jared Leto. But it's like one of the more successful bands of, a, of an actor. That I would yeah. say. A lot of in times two they years, have, they did 300 What, you reckon Dogstar shows. didn't do it? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Dog. Keanu. God. Well, I'll tell you what about <laughs> Dogstar, right? So I, the movie, uh, The Matrix was filmed, I want to say, 
I don't know. I was just out of high school. I remember I was dating this bird, and, and she I could see it being filmed from her apartment. So it would be 1995, let's say it was filmed, right? And so, so from 1995, and he made three Matrix films. Keanu Reeves was living in Sydney because they were all filmed in Sydney. And you could see Dogstar any night of the week. <laughs> if, you, if you were living in Sydney and you wanted to catch a bit of Dogstar, you would, you'd catch Dogstar whether you wanted to or not. Yep. You would walk into a bar in Sydney and go, oh, there's Keanu. Oh, God. <laughs> and he doesn't even sing. He's like the bass player. <laughs> He wouldn't have a good voice, I don't think. But yeah, but like the voice, fact so. that Dogstar were just like, oh, I guess we're living in Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you um, don't find Dogstar, Dogstar finds you. I know, Dogstar, <laughs> do, they, they, they weren't even advertised. <laughs> <laughs> they were everywhere, Dogstar, every night of the week. This is, uh, I was started and then I stopped for that, that question. So this dinner party facts now, part of our show, our expert gives us uh, something obscure, interesting about this topic to people that are listening can use to impress people, like at a bar dinner party. What do you got for us? Mine's pretty impressive. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's very uh, like I do not pat myself on the back often, but yeah. I am one of the one of I think it was 23 of us. Yeah. Um, I have played a show on all seven continents, and I did it in a year. Damn. Wow. And with who? Uh, with Metallica. We played a show in Antarctica, which no one has ever done. How? Where? <clears throat> what the fuck? <laughs> yep. Penguins they, love it. They, 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 they love it in those cold countries. <laughs> <laughs> For penguins? It's death metal, man. It does very well. Um, Fucking so, Santa was there. <laughs> so Metallica so, has played in, in all seven Southern continents. Home. Metallica's the only band in history that's played in all seven continents. Wow. Fallout Boy tried to do it and wasn't mm-hmm. able to get to Antarctica. Who, who did? Fallout Boy. Fall out boy trying to do it. Coke Zero got a hold of Metallica and said, we want to do... <laughs> something to raise awareness of how there is this place that's untouched and yeah. should remain that way. And, and so, so, so we built a fire stage. So we did a rock show. What's better than setting up Bring electricity and stuff like that? Right. <laughs> um, how we did it was really interesting. We went to the Argentinian science base. Mm-hmm. We played on a helicopter pad that was already existing. Mm. We played inside of a plastic igloo. Uh, it was silent disco style so that none of the the sonics would break off any glaciers or affect wow. anything. Oh, hmm. And they filmed it. They brought 250 fans on an expedition boat to Antarctica, and we played for them and all of the research scientists. That's wow. rad. And That's awesome. yeah. Um, I, I yeah. here's one. I invented silent comedy. Well, not the response. <laughs> no, this is this is true. I was I, I the, so silent disco came out. I, I would I would hesitate to say maybe 2005 was when that first started coming into like different things. And so they had it at the Edinburgh Festival, and that's where everyone went at the end. The Edinburgh Festival. It, it is such a fun thing. It's like going bowling. You get you're given your earphones or yep. those stuff, and you go at the nightclub and people are dancing. You could p- pick between the two, the two DJs. So I I I, uh, I said oh, we we could have two comedians on stage at the same time, <laughs> telling jokes, and everyone could have their earphones on, <laughs> and you could switch between the two comedians, and then I, and then like by the time I said that in a pub, someone had already set it up for me the next day. Oh, we're doing that thing you were talking about, and I'm like, all right, I'm in it now, right? And so me and Andrew Maxwell, and Andrew's coming on tour with me across the UK. So me and Andrew Maxwell came on stage and. Uh, uh, we, were, we were performing and the problem is people would switch between the comics so if they lost interest in you yeah, right. and you could feel the laughs out you're like I'm losing <laughs> I'm losing I've only I've only got a small portion of it so it just becomes a shit stirring yeah. thing so I just went like can everyone who's listening to me start patting themselves on the head? And then they started going, they started going like this. Started going like this. And people were like, oh, I want to get involved in this. <laughs> they lost all these. Um, well, Misty Roberts, thanks for being here. Yeah. Uh, the book, I think it's out in a couple of days, right? It's like three, out March 23rd. Yeah, yeah, three days from now. Yep. Um, it's called Touring and Mental Health, the Music Industry Manual. And you can also hear her uh, on iHeartRadio. See her, hear her at an International Women's Day event. Highlighting the women behind the scenes in the music industry. Thanks for being here. Oh, Thanks thank, for having me. Thank you so much for being on the fun. on the podcast, Misty. It's nice yeah. that uh, that I know a few things. There's <laughs> a change of pace for me. This is a confidence builder episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're ever at a party and someone says Dog Star's the most toured band ever, <laughs> go. Well, I don't know about that, and walk away. Good night, Australia. <laughs>